Good morning. Hello everyone, how's it going? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and welcome to a very special uh, live stream of the Pro Tips to Football podcast where we're going to be talking mostly about the, tomorrow's Europa League but we'll also have a look back at yesterday's Champions League and this, this evening's as well. Uh, joining me, you'll see here, here, here and here are here, here, Dan, Pro Tips to Dan and Pro Tips to Martin. Hello lads, high fives. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I don't know what way I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, fellas? Is alright? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Busy all morning, as always. It has been a busy all morning. Um, <laughs> uh, lads, did you like the football last night? Oh, oh, yeah, incredible games. I mean, I had both on in the background, but I was mainly concentrated on the Juve Spurs game, and that was probably one of the, as a neutral, one of the most entertaining games I've seen for quite a long time. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, Are there any months. neutrals with Spurs, though, Martin? Well, I mean, I, I don't have too much hatred for Spurs, to be honest. But, <laughs> um, I'll just go accept that they're a decent team now, unfortunately. Uh, is Buffon past it? He, he kept him in the game still with a couple of decent saves, but you can't, you know, um, he could have done better for the for, for the Ericsson free kick, I think. But Juventus yeah. should have been out of sight before Spurs even scored. They should have been 3 0 up before then, but. Yeah. They should have been. Well, got to get back into it. Yeah, he made he made he made two bad mistakes, but yeah, as you're right. He he did make some good saves as well. Um, you don't want it ending how it ended for Totti, though, with Buffon. You know. I mean, um, I, I can I honestly can see Spurs turning them over at Wembley. So mm-hmm, 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 for sure, sure. There's two two a two goal advantage or a way goal advantage. Now, so if they keep it tight, one all, they're happy nil nil. They're happy one nil. Either side, well, no, obviously not to, not to Juventus, but you know, yeah, I think Spurs definitely have have the upper hand here. What's your uh, thoughts, Dan? I was surprised. Um, Juve went two nil up, and I said to you, didn't I? Oh, look, check it out. You know, I told you Juve would win, but <laughs> wow, um, I was actually watching the Man City game. Um, I wanted to see how hard they go for Basel, and it was actually surprising because Basel kept attacking even in the second half, four 0 down. They were still going for it, and it made for an open game. I wonder if Pep went over to their manager after the game, went, you know, nice one, cheers, lads. <laughs> but, um, the goal he had an abs- uh, I don't know if you've seen the goals, but the second one, um, yeah, Bernardo Silva should never have scored that. And the third one, he, the keeper just watched. Aguero yeah. smash into the corner of the net, you know. Um, but they play. It's Man City. They keep on rolling on. They can play a weak side at home now. You know, four away goals. They've got Wigan in the cup. Yeah, it's um easy couple of weeks. Well, an easy few games them coming up. I know they've got a league cup final. They got a couple of others as well. But this is what Pep does. Um, I heard it was the twenty third time under Pep Guardiola, Man City have scored four or more. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? On what a real record. stat. It's the biggest you know. away win in a, in, a, in a knockout stage of the Champions League for a British side, isn't it? Something like that. Is that yeah. right, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool's 3 0 win um, last year or the year before, I think, was uh, a couple of years ago was the was the record. But yeah, they broke it last night. Okay. Yeah, they, they looked good. I only saw the highlights now because I was watching the Juve match, but yeah, the, the highlights I saw, uh, the long ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, they look pretty good. I, I really regret. Sometimes I forget that I have the Irish channels. I really regret watching BT Sports last night because it was so over the top uh, <laughs> for for Spurs to win. You know, it's like, yeah, uh, come on, lads, a little bit of balance. You know what I mean? Like, just even if they just had one one troll in there, you know, Graham Souness <laughs> or something, who could just be like, nah, come on, you know. But no, it's I I I don't like that style of. Um, of TV programming where it's it was very very one sided you know, uh, but anyway, uh, we'll see what happens tonight. What are you, what what are you going to watch tonight, lads? Which one? I don't know. You know, I don't think I will. I think I think the missus will. You know, will want to watch the Arsenal. Oh, it's Valentine's game. Day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. L- luckily, the wife's an Arsenal fan, so I probably will have to watch that. Um, which you know will be be good to watch. But after that, I don't think I'll be seeing any eight o'clock kickoffs. That's for sure. Oh, 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 that's awful. No, no, I, I don't have any of that. She knows work takes precedence over <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> Dan, what are you going to watch? Are you going to watch Liverpool, Porto or Real and PSG? Neither. Um, <laughs> Real Madrid, I, I got hate on YouTube for saying I hate La Liga, so I'm just going to repeat it. I hate La Liga, I hate Real Madrid, I hate Barcelona. 
And Real Madrid against PSG should... I mean, I know it should excite people, but it really doesn't excite me. And Porto and Liverpool, I think, it's going to be really tight. And I'm not really a fan. I, I don't really want to watch nil nil. So, um, night, in fr- night uh, cold up with a book, I think, for me. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just realised I was talking about Europa League. It's tomorrow, isn't it? I was yeah, 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 yeah. Time. yeah. I'm going to sit there tonight watching. Uh, I- I'm probably going to watch Real and, and PSG with-, with my little with my little Champions hey. League thing here. And, yeah, I'm going to sit there. And you're my Valentine. Um Right then, lads. Uh, do you want to make predictions for tonight or do you want to go straight on to the Europa League stuff? Um, I can give you my predictions for tonight if you want. Yeah, go on then. Go on, go I've for got, it. I've, I've gone for a Real Madrid win and I've gone for Porto base Liverpool under two and a half goals. Under two and a half. So uh, Real Madrid is what, 2.3, 2.4, something like that? 2.45. Let me just check. I've got my tips right here in front of me. Oh, under two and a half goals. Real Madrid at 2.37, less than two and a half goals. Porto Liverpool, 1.99. Oh, nice. Not bad. Uh, very good. What do you think, Martin? Um, I'll be really tempted to go for draws in both games, you know, 3.6 and 3.4-ish. Um, I, I, I think there'll be goals in both games. Over Under two and a half in Porto Liverpool, I can see it. Um uh, obviously, Real Madrid PSG is probably going to be like four three or something stupid. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be tempted with it. I'm probably not going to have a bet on on either game, but I'll be tempted with a draw on both. All right, fair enough. So uh, yeah, look, we wanted to more because because we had a, a Champions League podcast that came out on Monday. So go check that out on YouTube, iTunes. Uh, Pro Tipster, um, the news section of the Pro Tipster website, you can listen to that. Where, where, uh, I was with Dan and he gave his tips for all the games. So this podcast is, we wanted to focus a bit more on the on the Europa League. So uh, yeah, I even got geared up. Look, I got a hat, which was uh, a, hand, a hand-me-down if I'm honest. But uh, well, um, this, 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 uh, this is when the Europa League starts to heat up last, isn't it? It, it starts to get really good here because uh, the better teams... Uh, they know that this is their best shot at, at getting into the Champions League. Well, ones yeah. that don't have chances, of course, to win their league. This is their chance. So, like, you know, you have a look at Arsenal, uh, Lazio, yeah. um, teams like that. This, um, I suppose, Mar- Marseille as well. This is their chance to get into the Champions League uh, for next season if they don't, you know, finish in the top uh, three or four in their leagues. Um, but uh, on Arsenal, is uh, how, how is Wenger going to approach it from now on? Is he going to continue to rotate? Or is he going to start playing his uh, strongest, Arsenal, strongest eleven? Arsenal have got real, real problems tonight, uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, Lac- Lacazette's out for four to six weeks. Aubameyang is ineligible. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Up front. <laughs> brilliant. Um, I, I was reading actually. I was reading Arsenal fans going, "Screw Danny Welbeck, play Eddie and Ketia." That, that that's how high they rate Welbeck. Wow. Um, but yeah, they've got real problems because no Lacazette is out for a month, mm-hmm. out for at least a month. They will play their strongest team, though, I think, because obviously they don't got an FA Cup game at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll play the strongest team, but like not having a good forward, it's going gonna, it's gonna to handicap them somewhat. And the thing is, yeah. Austin Dunn's right. It's snowing. It's an artificial pitch. It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Austin um, <laughs> Dunn's have not lost a Europa League game at home this season. They've only dropped two Europa League points. The reason being, it's not a very nice place to play. Mm. Northern Sweden in February. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's for skiing or something. Yeah. Um, of course, there's an extra bit of added attention to this as well with uh, Austin's having an English manager. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, former Birmingham City player, Graham Potter. Yeah. Um, I remember him playing for us. He was all right. Um, he went there when they were fourth division, I think, and he's kind of got this mass, mad ethos about them. Like not just being a football team, but being part of the community and doing all this stuff around the community so that everyone buys in. And he's, yeah. he's, brought, he's brought in players, English players that you know I've, I've never heard of. Um, Jamie Hopcut, and, and he's done well in the Europa. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. It's working for him. He's got a team of players that are playing above the sum of their combined abilities. Um, and I think Arsenal are going to find. You know, I think a few teams have gone there thinking they're going to turn them over, and it's just not happened. Um, well, uh, to be honest, I was a bit surprised by Arsenal's price. I think it's 
look, uh, you know, I, I don't like touching stuff that's under evens, but I would have thought they would have been more like 1.3 for this. 1.3, 1.35. They're actually 1.5. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's about... I mean, I, I probably, in my head, I'm thinking Arsenal are a little bit short. Um, a little bit too short, maybe should be a bit like 1.6 or something like that because like Dan said I just look at taking everything into account I think they're going to find it very very difficult um, mm-hmm. so for me I, I think Osterson on the on the handicap is probably the way to go here what have you gone with then I've gone with plus one Osterson plus one so uh, they lose by one you get your state refunded but I can see them getting a positive result in all honesty especially with like Dan said the injury troubles up front that Arsenal have and yeah the fact that it's in Sweden it's tipping it down with snow, you know, it's freezing cold and it's on an artificial pitch. And I think the only thing that um, might be going against Osterson is the fact that they've had a winter break and I think they've only had one cup game uh, since since that break, which they won comfortably 3-0, but um, that could be the only negative for them. But they'll be well up for yeah, this. I was listening to him on, um, uh, what's the manager's name? Was Paul? Potter. I've forgotten, his, I've forgotten the manager's Potter. name. Graham yeah, Potter, Graham Potter, Potter, not, Potter. I was not listening Harry to Potter. Potter. Not no, Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Harry Potter yeah. was was interviewed. <laughs> no, I was listening to um, yeah. uh, Kevin Kilban. Uh, he, he works kind of as a, as a journalist now on Irish radio, and he was he, he was interviewing him, uh, Potter because they had played together uh, years ago, and they were talking about. Uh, Kilban asked him how were they preparing for this because you know mm-hmm. the Swedish winter break is fairly long, and he said that they had been over to Russia, and they had been playing the likes of uh, Zenit. And, and and teams like that preparing for it. Now I know they're friendlies, but um, you know you, you would think that Zenit would be a, a good step above Osterson. So you know it's fairly good preparation to come mm. up against a, a big team like Arsenal. But uh, like usually experts, lads, if you think Ostersons have a shout, then then I'll, I'll, I'm definitely on your side. Like um, be great, be absolutely brilliant for football if they pull something off tonight. Or 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 manage just a, a draw or, or a narrow a narrow defeat even. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. So there's another British side in action. I don't know if I'm allowed to call them British, though, am I? Uh, Celtic <laughs> are taking on a <laughs> Celtic are taking on a Zenit, we were just speaking about. Um, where are the odds for this one now? I've, my eyesight has gone to hell. Uh, so Celtic, 2.63. The draw, 3.38. And Zenit, 2.6-ish. Um, Martin, what do you think is going to happen here? Um... I, it's a tough one to call, you know. I mean, Celtic Parkhead is a tough place to go for any any European side. But just looking at how they've been doing, like they lost to Kilmarnock um, recently. I, th- I don't know if I don't I don't know if they'll be well up for this. The amount of injuries they've got as well, just listed here: Rogic is out, Roberts is out. You know, Stuart Armstrong, likes of Hayes, Craig Gordon, even um, all injured and. Um, they, he might not even risk Griffiths or Boyata as well. So I'm going to wait for the lineups on this because, uh, you know, if if it's not a strong Celtic side, they could get battered. Um, I suppose, like like what I was saying there about some of the uh, European teams who look at this as, as a Champions League uh, opportunity, uh, yeah. I suppose for Celtic, it's that's not the case because they're going to win anyway. Or, and, and, and and they'll have to go through qualification anyway, like they always do. So it, it doesn't really make much of a difference for Celtic, does it? No, yeah, exactly. It's one of those. I mean, realistically, do any, does any Celtic fan or player or, or, or Brendan Rodgers think they can really win the competition? I don't think so. So I, 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 I'd argue whether they're going to be bothered too much about this one. Mm-hmm. Well, some of the fans do, and I know this from experience, because yeah. uh, I was at the... I was at the Europa League final here in, in Warsaw. Uh, who was it? Seville were paying um, uh, lads from uh, Ukraine. Uh, Dilipno something, something, something. Mm. And uh, I'm sure Dan knows the proper name. Dinip, Dinipro. You remember? Yeah, the proper name is Dinipro. They dropped the long name. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I uh, ran into a whole load of Celtic fans who had booked the tickets early, thinking that they had, uh, thinking that they'd get to the final. So uh, yeah, no Celtic fans, they believe, man. I reckon there'll be some in uh, 
uh, Leon. It's in this year, the final, isn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. Dan, any, you'd be any prediction on this? Um, yeah, I've gone. For, I've gone for um, Zenit to win. Mm-hmm. Um, purely because I, Martin stole my uh, my stats about the uh, the injuries. Celtic have got a bunch of injuries. Um, they lost uh, three games at home in the Champions League. Zenit are uh, unbeaten this season in the uh, Europa League. They played three away games. Um, they smashed Vardar in Skopje 5 0. Uh, drew 1 1. Um, God, I can't see my handwriting here. And beat Sociedad 3 1 away. So, yeah, yeah and, and Parkhead's not. I don't think it's that great a deal. I don't think Celtic, I don't think Celtic are taking that seriously. Um, because, I mean, it's, it's like Martin said, they, they're not going to win it. They're going to be Champions League next year because they're going to win the Scottish League again. I don't know why they don't just give them the trophy at the start of the season at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, so, Zen is 2.67. Yeah, why not? Seems like value. Yeah, why not? All right. Uh, any other, I suppose there's another a big one. I don't know if, you, if you've had a look at this, lads. Dortmund, Atalanta, that looks like a good one. Dortmund are 1.8, Atalanta 4.33. Mm. Uh, I suppose Dortmund can begin to salvage their their, their season uh, with this. Um, but Obama Yang's a big loss, isn't he? Yeah, it's useless. Plus, is Batshuayi playing here play, wouldn't he? Yes, Batshuayi can play. Yeah. Batshuayi's yeah. play. Batshuay been a, a great replacement. He's, you know, yeah. he's got three and two games for them. Um, I think they'll be fine against that Salanta. Do you think so? I, I, was, I was looking at it thinking that Atlanta are a, are a tough team to roll over. You know, they haven't, I was just checking, they haven't lost, unbeaten in the last eight away in all competitions. And, uh, they seem to do quite well uh, against the big boys. I mean, they come to Everton and blew them away. Um, and I, don't, I think Dorman the win, but I think uh, I think maybe Atalanta on the handicap could could be a little bit of value. Um, Four point three three seems a seems a little bit big to me. What say you, Dan? Um, I've not I've not had a bet on this. Uh, I did write about it uh, in the Europe, Europa League preview article on the betting news section of uh, Project's website, and I did talk about about Shway being involved. Uh, gave a few more stats and uh, details about where the Asian handicap line lay. Uh, so if you want to read that, by all means go for it. Um, there's a couple of other games preview as well. Uh, I know Celtic Zenit was one of them. I can't remember. The other um. <laughs> I, the, I suppose the the biggest uh, the biggest football hipster uh, Euro, European tie in a while is happening uh, tomorrow night. Napoli are playing uh, uh, Red Bull Leipzig, a uh, Racing Ball Sport uh, Leipzig. So that's a big one for the football hipsters. Are Napoli uh, though, because you know they made it. It was fairly obvious about halfway through their Champions League campaign that they were not going to be taking it seriously and were going to uh, concentrate on the league because they got off to such a bad start. Mm. Um, the, it, it's probably going to be the same here, isn't it? They want to win the league. They don't care about the Europa League. Uh, I don't know, you know. it's Yeah, they do care about Serie A and they're going to do everything they can to win that. But I think they've got a great chance of winning the Europa League this year. But it, it does depend on how seriously they're going to take it. And honestly... Don't know how seriously they're going to take it, but I think just looking at the prices, I think Napoli are a little bit of value. I expect them to be odds on, to be honest. All right, Dan? Mm. I've not touched this one. Um, I went more hipster. <laughs> 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 let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Uh, Partizan and Pilsen. Nope. Nope. Uh, okay, one more guess, one more guess. Um, Oh, Spartak Moscow and, and Bilbao. I know what he's gone for. What's he gone for? What have I gone for? Astana Sporting Lisbon. Yep, yep. That's the one I've gone for. Astana of Kazakhstan. Um, the reason I've gone for them is Astana's home record in Europe League is amazing. They've only lost three times in 23 European games. Um, they, they play really well at home in the Europa League. Um, it's minus 17 in Astana. Uh, they have they have got a roof, but it's an artificial pitch. It's going to be a horrible place for sport and to play. And Astana are not favourites. There is value in that tie. I'm sure of it. Good stuff. That, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've gone for Astana plus 0.5 at 1.70, so win or draw. But I think Astana will get a positive result there. Um, and they're not fancy because, you know, who knows Astana. But like I said, they're a good side at home. A really, really good side at home. Uh, Sporting actually come into the game on the back of two away defeats as well. 
So, you know, they've, they've only won one competitive away game in 2018 in 90 minutes. Only one game competitively. I think it's in six away games, Sporting oh. Hall, this, this calendar year. So, yeah, that, that, that's my hot one, a star of sport. Mad. And do you know, Dan, how, do you know if, if they had a, a long winter break as well over there? Yeah, but that they've been playing. They've, they've, they've been playing some, like Costa Suns, they've been playing some really competitive friendlies um, to keep themselves in some in somewhat fitness order. Mm. Sporting had a bit of a break, not much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but it, it's, not to say, it, it, you take Portuguese players and you put them in minus 17 conditions on an artificial <laughs> pitch. Mm. And the thing is, with the roof shut as well, with the roof shut as well, humidity will be really high in the stadium. Um, I remember um, I remember being in the Millennium Stadium uh, when the roof was shut and it was horrible. Like it was I was sweating after half an hour, like like <laughs> and it'll be the same on the pitch, like you the the, the, the pitch will be water, um, just won't be nice to play on. Yeah. That's why I think Astana wins so many at home, because the pitch being artificial, the conditions not being great, it suits them. It doesn't suit opposition teams. Same as us, the Suns, really. You, you've got to look into these sort of things, why teams have really good home records, and mm. this is why. Because mm. it's not just about you know, fans and stuff. It's about the weather conditions, about the, the kind of pitch. I, I hate playing on artificial pitches, and I know I'm not alone. You know, Even 4G, they're not great to play on. Mm. Mm. And if you're a pro footballer and you're used to like proper turf, I'm sure it's not going to be nice. No, do you see um, another uh, potential for a, a scalp? Copenhagen are taking on um, Atletico Madrid. Oh, I, don't, I don't see a scalp there, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, nothing in there for me. I think, yeah, I think Atletico Madrid will get a job done quite comfortably there. Um, Atletico are actually going to go through some interesting times. I think uh, come the end of the season, um, their own. They're team sent by Wonder Group, of uh, who are a big Chinese conglomerate, and they're selling as of today. Wow. Um, so maybe there'll be less money going into it at Atletico, so this match might be really important for them. Although they should finish top four in Spain, which will guarantee a Champions League mm. for them anyway. I think they're second at the moment, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I think they are, actually. Yeah, behind, um, Valencia just behind them. A couple of comments there. Brilliant, lads. I'm not reading out the second one. I'm not. <laughs> Charlie Manson, brilliant. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> and uh, uh, any other matches, lads, that you want to talk about that I've missed um, here? Um, I just, I mean, I think they're too short for me, but, you know, Marseille, Marseille will probably beat Braga. Um, been impressed with Marseille this season and maybe Partizan Belgrade as well to beat Pilsen. Uh, very, very intimidating place to go. I think both have had uh, winter breaks, so they're a little bit rusty, but I think there might be a little bit of value there at Partizan. Um, but yeah, nothing yeah, nothing else really sticks out for me. Leon Villarreal will be a good game. I'm not going to bet on it, mm-hmm. but that would be a class one to watch. Yeah, Leon are going to be well off for all these matches because they, they could have a home, a, home, a home game in the final. Well, yeah, that's very true. No, um, that's something you got to think of. But that's like when when Bayern Munich were were so good that season, and 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 they lost to Chelsea in the final. Um, you know that was what was pushing them on. They knew that they'd be playing at home, uh, although not in front of many home fans, admittedly. But they'd be playing in their home city in their home stadium. I mean, it makes a big difference. But uh, yeah. so Leon, Leon, Leon might, might I don't know. There might even be a good bet for the whole thing on on, on that kind of logic. Um. Sure, we'll finish up then, lads. Unless there's any, and I don't think there's any other matches you want to mention, is there? Uh, no, nothing I can say that sticks out worth worth talking about. I don't think. All right, then. Sure, we'll leave it off then, and uh, we'll be back on tomorrow evening with our um, our normal podcast, where we look forward to the weekend's action from all the European leagues, with a special focus, of course, on the Premier League and the Championship. Uh, Pro tips are Dan. Where are you on the internet? I'm Protip Sedan, all one word on Twitter. Uh, Protip Sedan, all one word on Facebook. Um, yeah, come and find me. Give me some abuse about the home city being crack. Uh, with, um, ask if you've got any questions about football or tips, please give me a shout. Okay, what about you, Martin? 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pro Tips to ENG or on Facebook at Pro Tips to Martin, three separate words. Um, yeah, guys, come and say hi. Um, uh, you can talk to me about past West Ham European adventures if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I can talk to you about past Birmingham City European adventures. <laughs> I think I have um, more successful than yours, Martin. Yeah, Ooh, just... meow. <laughs> we, got, we got knocked out by a car. <laughs> Right, actually, look, you can get me if you want on uh, Pro Tips of Pod on Twitter and uh, Pro Tips of Paddy on Facebook. And the three of us, we're always hanging around this uh, Facebook page as well. So don't be shy, get in touch if you have any questions about betting or if you need any, or if you want any direction on how to use the Pro Tipster website as well. Get over there if you don't use it, it's a great resource. There's loads of great tipsters on there and you can post your uh, sports bets and keep an eye on their stats. And keep an eye on how you're doing in certain leagues, certain uh, sports, things like that. If you want to, uh, you know, before you open a bookies account, if you want to test some strategies before you, you know, lose any money, uh, you can test out your strategies with us for nothing. And uh, if you're good, we'll, we'll end up paying you, actually. So it's a win-win for everyone. So make sure and check out protipster.com. And, uh, yeah, one thing to ask, um, share this podcast with one you know, of your football mad mates as well, because the podcast is growing. It's getting better and better, as you know, and uh, we want to share it with as many people as we can. All right. So, look, that's it from, from me, Pro Tips to Paddy and the lads. We'll be back tomorrow with an audio podcast. So, good luck. See you then. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster E-N or ProTipster I-R-L. Bye.